Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, sometimes it's important to think of alternate ways of doing things, and uh, if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you are in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide ranging variety of industry professionals and pick their brains, not only about current projects, but state of the business, what got them started, all sorts of interesting stuff. And if you'd like to subscribe, and we re- we'd really like it if you do, uh, please do so over at either Apple or Spotify Podcasts, or you can find everything over ar- archived over at our YouTube channel. If you want to follow us on social media, we'd appreciate that too. Please check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at either at In The Seats or at It's Podcast One for all the latest updates. And finally, and maybe most importantly, please visit us over at In The Seats, intheseats.ca, where our hardworking team is cracking away on movie reviews and all sorts of fun stuff from festivals and new releases and video on demand and DVD and Blu-ray and... Anything you can think of. But on today's episode, sorry, I'm talking a little bit posy wise, but I don't know why. But anyway, on today's episode, uh, we are sitting down with director Carlisle Kellum and his new film, uh, Comfort Farms, which is a really sort of powerful and interesting documentary. It's going to hit uh, all video on demand platforms coming on December 8th. And it's, uh, it's a film that follows an unlikely group of veterans and sort of animal-loving butchers, farmers, chefs, and one former combat army ranger, John Jackson, who, after, after trying to take his own life, started Comfort Farms. And it's one of these, the more unique and really compelling and interesting veteran therapy programs in the country. It's... It's one of those places that, you know, not only looks at alternative therapies for helping our men and women who are coming back from combat, but it's, it's, it's a place that really gives value to, and importance and understanding to sort of issues around life, death, sacrifice, and it's, 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 uh, it's a place and it's a film that really allows you to sort of ponder on the human condition. And when we talked with Carlisle, we did exactly that. Because we, uh, I asked him how he uh, discovered the place and what prompted him to make a film and what got him in the business and uh, sort of the interesting issues that the film brings up. And uh, I hope you enjoy our talk, because I know I did. All right, well, obviously, first off, just again, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate this. And congratulations on the movie. It really kind of struck me because it we tend to lose focus on how these men and women who are who are coming back from war really need sort of that sense of purpose i mean i think there was a line in the film that going from afghanistan to a cubicle doesn't quite work you know it's like there needs to be something else i'm kind of curious how did you ultimately find the farm and decide to do a movie about it so um yeah, long story. So Comfort Farms, the movie takes its name from a place called Comfort Farms. Yeah. You just, Millville, Milledgeville, Georgia. Um, it's a small animal farm founded by John Jackson, a former army ranger. Um, I uh, was sent down there to take some photos for a, uh, I'm also a photographer. I was down there taking some photos for a uh, uh, cooking or culinary magazine. Um, and I had no idea what the place was about really. Um, you know, all I knew about the place was that it, uh, uh, oh, what I was told is that it was a place um, which was uh, uh, founded to help veterans suffering from PTSD. Mm. Um, and in fact, the first kind of light bulb went on for me um, when I was listening to the founder, John Jackson, um, give his perspective about PTSD. And um, it was kind of just some of what you mentioned before that you know although it's a real problem and it's it's never to be marginalized it's serious it's a real issue um 
for a lot of people, it's kind of become a generic term to refer to um, anything afflicting a veteran. And it's not uncommon for veterans to kind of be diagnosed with that when it's not necessarily what's going on when, you know, more time, what I heard more than anything else talking to the veterans down there was a lack of purpose, um, missing the camaraderie, going from a black and white world with a clear mission to, to, a, uh, to a world of gray. Um, those were the things that I kept hearing over and over. Um, and like I said, that's not to marginalize any kind of uh, mental illness. Of or course, or yeah. because Some of the folks down there are dealing with that, but it seems like when they got... Um, got to a place where they, they had that sense of person purpose. Um, as John says, you know, they had uh, a new mission, which in this case is to serve the community, um, uh, you know, uh, sustainable farming, um, offer the community good, healthy, um, food, um, having a new mission, um, really, really changed a lot of these guys perspective and, and, and helped them to kind of get on their feet again, more than any medication ever did. So. Was uh, I, I was uh, was this a hard sell to get them to to participate in an actual film? Because I mean, taking pictures is one thing; doing an actual feature no. film is a different film thing entirely. Yeah, that's a really good question. But no, in fact, you know, it was kind of well. I don't want to. I was going to say it was kind of a hard sell for me, but I don't want to put it that way. But when I first went down there, um, the person I was taking photos for mentioned you know, you might want to turn this into a documentary. And my first thought was, you know, there are so many, there's so much material out there about PTSD and what veterans are going through. I just don't see what I could offer um, in that space. But when I went down there and saw how different it was um, and how their perspective of the whole thing was, was, was so much different. I started to notice a bunch of angles that all came together, but no, they, they were all into it. Um, and, you know, John, the founder, um, you know, he works with a bunch of guys down there that are really, um, really loyal, as uh, a lot of veterans are. And it didn't take any, you know, <laughs> when he was into it, the people that he asked were also <laughs> into it. So, um, no, it wasn't difficult at all. I think there was one guy that 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 kind of shied away. But other than that, everyone was really into telling their stories. They're really into kind of, you know, getting uh, a message out there that um, veterans, you know, what veterans are, I guess you could mm -hmm. say, and, you know, what it is that causes many of them to suffer. And a lot of people don't, according to them, a lot of people don't really have a, a clear picture of what and why that is. Yeah. And I mean, another, something else that really stood out for me in the film is just the connection that it makes, uh, just on death in general and just how the need when especially you know for these guys who have maybe done things and seen things and that, that they have to come to terms with but at the same time understanding sort of how it has its place sort of in the grander scheme especially when it comes to sustainable farming and just how the animals are treated as well it's it really makes for sort of an interesting relationship to allow these subjects and these these men and women to sort of almost have a bridge sort of back to society if that makes a lot of sense yes it makes every bit of sense in fact you know when i went down there um uh after spending some time down there and i started to kind of put the film together in my head i realized just what you said i mean the place you know and you know it Sometimes it's hard to put this into words, but the film itself, um, um, I mean, although the film or the place deals so specifically with veterans issues, um, it brings up a number of questions about the human condition as a whole. And I think yeah. it reaches, reaches all of us. Um, so it, when I started to think about what I wanted to do with this, I realized that you know, although um, what veterans go through and, you know, um, veterans issues are a big part of the film. It's not what the film is particularly about. Yeah. Um, because there's so much going on at Comfort Farms that, you know, in almost like a literary and, and kind of ironic way, 
tells us, I think, a lot about human nature and ourselves. And so that's ultimately what I was what I was trying to put together. Um, um, yeah. And I think that it, 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 it does. It, it, it asks questions about death and sacrifice and things like that. And um, I think overall, you know, uh, I, uh, I think I ended up with what's a film about universal themes, you know, while exploring a place dedicated to helping veterans in the local community. I think that, you know, although that's a big part of it and people will see about that, um, ultimately it's, it's, it explores universal themes that we can all connect to, if that makes sense. No, and you're absolutely right, because I mean, especially just on a global scale, I mean, we tend to lose focus on that, that need for purpose, it, it tends to get taken for granted. And I love how the film really does give it the value that it deserves. Because it's, again, it's one of those things that you don't always think about, but it's so important for anybody in any walk of life to have. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's the way, that's the way, you know, the essence of comfort farms to me is something more than just a veteran therapy farm. All that's a huge and very important part of it. Um, there's something about the way everything comes to, together down there that almost tells a story about, like I said, ourselves and, and human nature. And I decided, you know, for that reason to interweave several things together to try to create, you know, um, a uh a more i use this word it might not be the best one but kind of like a more literary um take on it than just like a procedural or a, a scientific you know um psychiatric study of why people suffer and you know what i mean uh, no absolutely yeah i mean yeah. it really does allow us to especially with the issues around sustainable farming as well because I mean, I'm, I, I don't think it's the exact line, but I think he said, uh, like, if you can't handle watching an animal get killed for or right. culled for farmed, then don't watch, go eat, you know, go have more vegetables. That's fine. But right. un, like, it's a, it's really, there is such a disconnect out there in terms of the price that is paid for what we can have. And that is something that applies not only for the military people, but just in terms for us, for understanding where we get our food and how we eat our food and all Absolutely. those issues around that. It's, it's, it, there is really, it's, it's such an interesting dynamic. Well, I'm really glad you say that because you're, you're really hitting right on the main points that I was trying to get across in the film. Um, and one of those was, yes, I mean, it, it's about that to some degree, it's about, um, you know, the truth of, you know, you, when you go to the grocery store and pick something up, it's, it's an animal that once lived and most yeah. people, that. I mean, and I'm not uh, making a comparison between pe people and other creatures, but you know, people go away to war and we sit at home and watch it on TV, but we forget what it's really like. So there, there's some parallels in there too. I just noticed a lot of, a lot of parallels down there between farming, um, the way they farm, combat, all these different things that kind of came together in a, in a really interesting way, at least I think so. You must have eaten pretty well by uh, just by oh. getting to be down there. <laughs> I mean, I, and I say this, you know, not um, uh, in any way tongue or chip, but it was the best food I have ever had anywhere. I mean, it was just unbelievable. And uh yeah i've never had anything like it you know a lot of 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 really you know experienced and um uh i don't know if you'd say notable i don't know what the word is for this but you know chefs that really know what they're doing and can and really cook spend a lot of time down there um from atlanta and other areas all around the country um and yeah, they prepare just amazing food and they do it for a small amount of people. So if you're fortunate enough to be one of the ones there, you really get to taste some some really good stuff. It's a really interesting community, um, very diverse um, people of all walks of life coming together for a common mission. You know, they put any differences kind of um, to the side and really focus on what they're doing. And it's it's good times. There's a sense of humor there, but there's also, you know, uh, a lot of serious energy too so it's it's a it's a really really cool place well and it's it's letting the bullshit of the world which 
exactly. tends to overtake us all at the, on, even on our best days sometimes just let that wash away and sort of get down to the the point of you know why you live in a community and treating people other people and animals as well with respect exactly it you know and what they do there um they're they're very much into you know being self-sufficient and uh sustainable farming and so forth and so on and um, people knowing what they eat and knowing where they live and knowing about the land and taking care of it and so forth and so on. Um, but that translates over to um, just what you said, um, you know, get, getting rid of, you know, uh, it, it, it kind of breaks everything down to the core essentials. So when these people get together and they're in this environment, the last thing they're thinking about is what they saw on the news or this, that, the other thing they're thinking about, you know, all the basics of survival and, and not in a bad way in an enjoyable way. So, um, and I, and I'm saying more when everybody comes to get reasons, of course they deal with, um, you know, there are a lot of veterans there that are suffering and going through a lot of stuff, but you know, at the end of it all, I've, I have not been there when people were, you know, going on and on about anything other than, you know, what they can do to work together to, for the common good. And I think that's definitely needed these days. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Now, I'm always kind of curious because, I mean, you said you went down there to take photographs, but you have done other shorts as well. And I'm kind of curious, what ultimately got you into this business? Was it photography? Was it being a filmmaker or a storyteller? What was sort of your in to, to all of this, really? So I, um, well, in fact, I always, you know, I always had a lot of interest in, in film. Um, you know, I, I started out as an oil painter. Um, I worked as a mural artist for a long time, doing fancy murals and upscale homes. And all during this time, I, I, I was kind of thinking of, of film in the back of my mind um, or, or wanting to do it. But where I lived at the time, there was, there was no such thing as a film program, so forth and so on. So I just kind of uh, did what was in front of me. Um, I did um, start photography. My undergraduate degree was in theater and English literature. Um, I was a founding member of a theater company. I did about everything but make movies. <laughs> and then, you know, it, it uh, kind of came into my community, uh, the opportunity. Um, I was working as a photographer and I had the opportunity to do some, uh, some uh, video type stuff. Um, and I just kind of self-taught from there um, and got into it became a, uh, a, a um, uh, for a small production company, a creative director for a small production company, um, had some, some good projects to work on there and made some shorts. And then, you know, this, I kind of just fell into, like I said, I wasn't planning on doing this. I, I'd never really planned on doing documentaries to be honest with you, but I, I've really didn't, I really have enjoyed it and really learned you know, a lot about um, myself in the process. And I've come to really, really love the, the art of the documentary. But, you know, it was just a kind of a winding road. Um, you know, it's something that I always wanted to do, but I guess, you know, it just didn't seem feasible. And then kind of when it did, instead of going out and getting it, I was kind of waited around till it was feasible. Um, so that's kind of my path. How do you think, uh, because I mean, whenever I talk to people who make documentaries, a lot of times it, it's stuff that they fall into or stories that they discover. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of curious because if you had tried to write this as like a story spec or an idea, it would have been a bit harder to sell, but as a, it definitely, the story is a lot clearer in documentary form. And I'm kind of curious, how does that form sort of enable the storytelling that you yeah, to cross. that's 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 a really good point. And that's one thing that, you know, um, uh, that's definitely something that I like about this medium, about doing documentaries is that, well, at least for me, it leaves me a lot of room to um, uh, kind of discover something it's, as it's moving along. Um, you know, I'm also a writer. I've, I've been writing for a long time and you know, the way I write is a lot different than the way I made this documentary. Um, it, it, it really allowed for a very kind of free and open kind of story because I kind of found the pieces as I was moving along and then sat down 
and then formed it. So it was kind of working backwards from what, how I would normally write. Um, um, but is that on target answering your question? I don't, I don't, so. No, absolutely. Yeah. Kind of fell off the point there, I think. No, 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 please. <laughs> don't worry about it, man. But I mean, it's one of those things because I'm always fascinated just in terms of how projects get formed and how they put together. Because I mean, especially these days, it, we live in such a day and age where, I mean, for, forget the fact that we're at home watching all watching Netflix anyway, but there is so much content. There is so much options out there for the consumer and the viewer. And I'm kind of curious when you're focusing on something and making something like, can you, can you even get outside of that and, and jump to the, how is this going to get seen? Will people see yeah. it? Or do you just have to stay in the moment when you're making something? Oh, that's a wonderful point. You know, I've been doing this for a long time in one way or another, um, whether it be, you know, commercial content, whatever. Uh, you know, I don't do a whole lot of that anymore. I don't really like commercials, to be honest with you. But um, whatever whatever I've been doing, and I've, I did, yeah, when I started this project, that's kind of one of the things I checked off on the list is there, you know, I'm going to put money into this. Somebody's going to put money into this. Our time, effort, so forth and so on. Um, is that is it feasible that anyone's going to see it, or is it just going to be an expensive home movie? Because you know, as an artist and other things, the last thing you want to do is just make something that you, that sits on your shelf. You want somebody to see it. I mean, right? Yeah. So yes, I thought about that. I thought about who is going to help this get out there and why would they do it? Of course, that was second to the subject matter, which was most important. But yes, I did take that into to account. And I think that was in there somewhere with my decision to make this film as I knew that, you know, um, there were a lot of people that would want to see it, a lot of people that would benefit from it and a large community um, um, already out there that that would really... Um, you know, really take to something like this. And it, you know, it could do some good. Um, now, you know, if this was just a little independent drama or something like that, you just never know. With this, I felt like there was an audience. So I did take that into account. You know, I, if there was an audience, but I didn't think there was a film, I wouldn't have done it. Yeah. But I, I saw that there was a film and I saw that there was an audience. So I said, hey, you know, it's worth going for. Um, there's a chance somebody could see it. Uh, so how have the reactions been so far because i mean it is a very sort of honest and sort of yeah. straightforward look at the issue that doesn't try to sort of overly sugarcoat it any which way right hey you know it's it's been good and i didn't know i mean i don't know if you know how this is but when you're making these things you lose kind of uh an honest perception of what oh, it even is. Sure. <laughs> right. so you know uh I was refreshed when I started to show it around to people who would not have a biased opinion and started to get some good feedback. And, you know, most all of the feedback I've gotten has been pretty positive. And, you know, that's from people who, um, like I said, they're going to tell me the truth. Um, you know, I had a few reviews. One of them was pretty bad. <laughs> I've gotten a couple. But other than that, you know, the feedback's been pretty good. And I haven't had you know, some of the issues that are kind of, uh, the, I guess you'd say hot button issues that I um, contemplated whether I should put them in there or not, you know, some of the imagery and so forth that I decided to leave in is not really, you know, cause as, you know, with this, the test audience and other people that have seen it, it, it hasn't really, you know, had any kind of ne negative effect or, um, you know, uh, did anything to affect their opinion of the movie. Um, and yeah, I, so it's, it's been mostly positive feedback, um, which is good. Um, it's definitely an interesting movie. Uh, I definitely shot it in a unique way and I did that, you know, very purposefully. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I shot the interviews really close up and way more close up than you'd shoot any kind of typical inter interview. Um, I mean, not crazy. I mean, you've seen it, but yeah, yeah. Uh, it's in, it made for it made for very per, it made it feel more personal. Exactly, and I did all of that. You know, I tried to do all of these things. You know, some people may say this sounds pretentious, but I try to do all these things to, you know, move along with the theme and, and embellish what I see as the theme of the film. And um, I'm very proud of it. I think that you know most people that have seen it 
like the style of it. You know, I'm sure there's some people that won't, but um, it did. There are some risks taking taken when making it, or I did take some risks when making as far as the shooting style and so forth, and the editing of the narrative and so forth. But um, all the feedback has been pretty good. You know, I didn't expect it to be. I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Not because I think it's a bad film, just because it's, it's a little different, I guess, than what you know you'd see on the Discovery Channel or anything like that. And that's you know when you when you take military issues, things like that, people are kind of naturally, for some reason, thinking they're going to see a Discovery Channel style documentary or a lot of people um, And that's not what it is at all. Um, so, yeah, I've been very happy with, you know, the most important thing to me was, you know, how are veterans going to respond to this? Because they are not only the biggest audience, they're also the ones that, you know, could... Um, either benefit from this or um, uh, offer it to somebody else that it could benefit, um, you know, to learn about comfort farms, to learn about kind of the human condition and what, what uh, from, from this kind of perspective. Um, and then of course, yeah, you know, after that, that was, you know, everybody else other than veterans and everybody has seemed to kind of take to it pretty well, which is, which has been surprising. Well, and I think that's the important thing too, because it's it's one of those films that it isn't trying to convince you or sell you one way or another. It's just encouraging you to sort of take in that alternate perspective and sort of appreciate it and let it sit with you for a minute and sort of understand it before moving forward. And I think that's something that can get lost in documentary filmmaking, especially when there there are, because I mean, there are issue filmmakers out there where it will be a little, a little too obvious who will want to push the slant in one direction or another. And I don't think this does. I think it, it really does toe the line right where it needs to be. That really, really means a lot because, you know, one of my fears when making this was that, you know, I would catch myself doing that. I mean, it was really important to me to try to stay away from that as much as possible. You know, although I really like what they're doing there, so forth and so on, I wanted to stay away from this being like a commercial for the place or, um, you know, right. uh, yeah. anything that, you know, seemed just like you said um you didn't want to rag on veteran affairs or you didn't want to make a commercial for the farm it had to be yeah i wanted to kind of capture the essence of the place the way that i saw it um and what i saw going on there and what i took away from it without you know putting any kind of real political opinion into it i mean or you know so yeah i'm, I'm glad that you said that that means a lot and i, th I think that it did turn out that way no, I, and I agree. It's it, it's it's really an interesting film. And I mean, just to put a bow on all this, thinking back in your career, can you boil down, boil it down to one moment or even one movie where the light bulb went off in your head and went, okay, in some way, shape or form, I've got to do this? Um, what do you mean by that exactly? With, well, with from a career standpoint, like, was there one movie you saw and where you went, okay, I want to be a film? Uh, I see. Yes. So like a favorite movie type thing or a movie that uh favorite influential that kind of that sort of thing one uh, that sort of expanded your horizon on terms of maybe i could do this yeah um you know i don't know that's the all question for me to answer and i feel like whenever i do answer it i'm just influenced by what's going on at the time and i don't i don't know i really don't um i could name a a bunch of books like that well, hey, that works hey um so um but that is a good documentary that's a good documentarian answer though i will say that being influenced by the moment i think that's important oh yeah i just you know i don't know i, I i've never been able to put my finger on the kind of you know the film that that did that there's just so many different little moments from different films that that have done that that you know, if I mention the whole film, I feel like I'll be blowing that, blowing it too much out of proportion for the way it really affected me. It's just more right. of that go on inside of those, those films. But um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I, hate, I can't answer it. I'm sorry. You're, you're allowed to not answer, but I, I, I hope people uh, 
put get to put Comfort Farms on that list at some point because it's it's really a fascinating film that I hope a lot of people get to check out. I just want to say thanks again for the time today, man. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. All right. Cheers, brother. Have a good one. You too.